morning. So, Bill, uh, yes. who are you depicting today? Uh, I am uh, depicting a Greek uh, gendarme uh, with a 1915 tunic during World War I, uh, Salonika front, all the way up to the Greco-Turkish War of 1922. Okay, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about Greece in the First World War? Okay, so Greece in the World War I was pretty complicated. You had two, two camps. You had the king, uh, King Constantine, who was pro-German, uh, mainly due to the fact that his wife was the Kaiser's sister. He wanted to, to, uh, to remain neutral. And then you had the prime minister, Eleftherios Venizelos, who is uh, depicted here, who um, wanted to enter the war on the side of the Entente. Early on in the war, where, during the, the uh, Gallipoli campaign, uh, Prime Minister Eleftherios wanted to send Greek troops to Gallipoli. The king stopped him because he wanted to remain neutral. The Greeks had a pact and a treaty with the Serbs that stated, if the Serbs are ever attacked, the Greeks have to come to their aid. This is what Prime Minister Eleftherios uh, Venizelos was using as a pretext for Greece to enter the war. He wanted to enter the war mainly to see if Greece could get uh, concessions and to implement what was called the Megali Idea, which was the great idea of Greater Greece. Uh, and it's depicted here. Um, and if I can show you, I'll put my I'll put my hat on. So, what it states is, this was the plan. They wanted to take back part of their historical claims to Asia Minor from uh, Alexander the uh, Great and uh, Byzantium. So they were trying to make a greater Greece, kind of like uh, Mussolini wanted to make uh, the Roman Empire come come back to life, right? So, in World War I, so the Greeks, so during, so between 1915 and 1917, it was basically a schism, where you had the monarchists, which were neutral, and you had the Venizelists, which wanted to enter the war. Basically, the Allies blockaded Athens, the French and the British. They pretty much caused a civil war and they forced the hand of the king to abdicate. So the king had to flee, he went into exile and thus the, the country fell under the uh, control of the Entente and the pro-Entente government which was Prime Minister Eleftherios Venizelos. As soon as the king left, they entered the war in 1917 uh, on the Salonika front, uh, where they were there until 1918. They fought a few battles. The main one is uh, the Battle of uh, Skradilagin. And after that, they were sent to Russia to fight in the Russian Civil War against the Bolsheviks. That was in, uh, I believe, December 1918, all the way up to April 1919. Uh, sorry, it was May, yeah, it was late, sorry, it was May 1919 that they landed in uh, Smyrna after. Uh, so from, from the Ukraine, they went to Smyrna, and from Smyrna, they expanded all the way out to Polatli, which was, I don't remember how many kilometers it was from Ankur. 60. 60, there you go, good. <laughs> so that's the furthest that, that, that the Greek army got. Then they retreated back to their previous lines of spring of 1921, namely Afion, Karakisar, uh, Kutakia, Eskisekir. And they stayed there, a stalemate, for one year between September 1921 and, uh, and August of 1922, whereby uh, Mustafa Kemal launched a major counter-offensive on August 26th of 1922, driving the Greek army all the way back to the coast of uh, Smyrna, where it had to be hastily uh, evacuated on September 8th of 1922.
and thus ended the whole adventure for Greece uh, from World War One. It was continuous fighting from World War One all the way up to 1922. So throughout the war, there was basically an internal fight within Greece. Correct. Whether to join the war or not. Yes. And there, after that, I think there was an internal fight or where, whether a... Um, how, how were they convinced into going into Turkey as a uh, invading Well, force? I mean, they were... It, it wasn't a difficult proposition for the Greeks to be want to expand, right? Uh, the Greeks uh, expanded during the Balkan Wars of 1912 and 1913. Uh, they had expanded their borders tremendously. And this was another opportunity to expand Greece of the Five Seas, as they uh, called it. So the British, to entice the Greeks into participating in World War I, promised them Asia Minor, or the, the, the Greek, the historically Greek sections of Asia Minor, namely uh, Smyrna. So, uh, so the Greeks said, so they were always, they were trying to get the Greek king out so that the pro-Entente government could take power, which was Prime Minister uh, Venizelos, and he was able to get the Greeks into the war on the side of the Entente. Okay. What are you showing here? Uh, I'm basically showing basic uh, equipment and gear that, that the Greeks had during uh, Salonika. This uh, ammunition belt is for a uh, label. Um, it's an eight, I think it's a 1874. Oh, sorry, it's a Gras 1874. We have a Monlicker Schonauer 1903 uh, pouches. We have a, a Greek emblem that went on the uh, kepi, or no, sorry, on the uh, bonnet that, that they had. Um, cups, canteens. Uh, entrenching tool, the Adrian, mm -hmm. uh, what we have here also. Which is the French helmet used by the Greek army. The Greek Manlicker 1903. Oops. Yeah. The Greek Manlicker 1903, which was, this is a 19, this is a World War I I issue. Steyr 1914 with the Royal Crest. Mm -hmm. 1903, uh, 14 here. This is the only, the only army that ever ordered these were the Greeks. There's no other army that got got these. So this rifle is uh, unique to the Greek army only, and it fought through from the Balkan Wars all the way up to 19, all the way up to 1940, 41. So this is what they had in terms of a uh, rifle, Austrian made. And uh, yeah, this is it. Would this be the main armament? This was the main armament of, also of the Greek army at that at that during time. During also the Greco-Turkish War. Correct. Yeah. This was it. Yeah. This was it. And they also had French because the French early on were supplying them, and they had French arms from the fall of 1916 to enter the Salonika uh, front because. During that, that time, the king, who was pro-German, did not want to allow any French or English weapons to get to the, to the uh, army because he didn't want them to enter the war. So he would sabotage it. And once he was uh, removed, the, the French were, and the Brits, because this is British, this is British, this is French, British, they were able to uh, supply them with a lot of gear to enter uh, Salonika in World War I. Greco-Turkish, whatever they had, they took and they threw into the, into the fight. They were only expecting to occupy Smyrna because the Brits gave them a mandate to occupy Smyrna with the option of annexation in five years' time. The problem was, as soon as the Greeks landed, this is what caused the nationalist movement. So you had bands of uh, nationalist irregulars. Nationalist movement in Turkey, you mean. Correct. Yeah. You had bands of uh, irregulars that were continuously uh, attacking the Greek troops. Which in Turkey is known as Kuvay Emilie. Thank you. Yeah. And this is what gave the Greeks the, the pretext to expand in their 1920 summer offensive. They were telling the Brits, we could take care of 
of this nationalist movement. Don't you worry. And they did early on, 1920, because they weren't going up against a real organized army. They were going up against a local uh, militia irregular army. The first army that the Greeks ever came up against was at the first battle of Inonu, and where they were defeated. And instead of doing something different a second time, they went back to the same place and attacked again for a second time, the second battle of Inonu. So you they think Inonu, again. Inonu battles are important, very Extremely, important? Extremely, because... Why is that? It was the very first battle that the Turkish, the new Turkish army won. It wasn't the Ottoman army. That was, that was done. The Ottoman army signed the Treaty of Sèvres in August of 1920. And the first battles of Inonu happened in uh, December or January of 1921, the first. And the second one happened, I believe, in February or March. Uh, and it was the first victory, and it was commanded by General uh, Inonu, hence the, the name he was given, uh, or, or the Battle of uh, Inonu was be because of him. It, it was to honor him because he was the one who, who won the first uh, victory of the Turkish army. That's, thank you. Thank you.